Lagoons are a simple method of treating wastewater. Sewage enters the lagoon at one end. The flow entering the lagoon is called influent. Then, it travels through at least one basin of very slow-moving water where pollutants can settle to the bottom of the pond and good bacteria are allowed to break down many of the compounds that can be detrimental to the environment. Most lagoon systems have multiple sections or cells. Once the water has passed through all the cells of a lagoon, it is typically disinfected with chlorine or UV light and released back into the environment. The flow exiting the lagoon is called effluent. Lagoons are home to good bacteria that digest organic matter in sewage. Typically, the digestion of these organics requires oxygen. The amount of oxygen necessary to break down the organic matter is called biochemical oxygen demand, or BOD. Another property that is monitored for wastewater treatment is total suspended solids, or TSS. Excess suspended solids cause the water to appear cloudy and result in poor water quality. Suspended solids can consist of soil, organic material, and algae. A vast majority of the soil particles settle out of the water by the end of the treatment process. So TSS in lagoon effluent is primarily algae and other organic matter. Lagoons are a great way to treat wastewater and have many advantages over alternative treatments such as mechanical plants. Mechanical plants are expensive to install, require many more man-hours to operate, use far more electricity, and cost much more to maintain than lagoons. Another advantage of lagoons is long hydraulic retention time. Hydraulic retention time, or HRT, is the average length of time it takes for the influent wastewater to reach the end of the treatment cycle. A longer HRT means that more complex chemicals such as pesticides, herbicides, and pharmaceuticals are given time to break down prior to the effluent water being introduced back into the environment. The two properties of wastewater effluent that are most likely to be regulated are BOD and TSS. BOD is monitored because excess oxygen demand can cause the dissolved oxygen levels to drop low enough to kill fish and other native aquatic life. TSS is monitored because it causes poor water quality. Other properties that may be regulated are ammonia, total nitrogen, and phosphorus. Ammonia is toxic to aquatic life in high enough concentrations. Marine life is particularly sensitive to ammonia levels. Nitrogen and phosphorus are two necessary nutrients that naturally keep plant growth rates stable. However, when artificially high levels of nitrogen and phosphorus are introduced into aquatic environments, Plants that live in the water, such as cattails and algae, can experience a huge spike in growth. The excess plant growth is typically followed by a large die-off which produces an abundance of dead and decaying matter. This decaying matter consumes oxygen, which then causes low oxygen levels in the water. This process is rather complex and is referred to as eutrophication. Eutrophication can drastically alter an aquatic ecosystem by replacing aerobic organisms such as fish with anaerobic growth such as the sludge found in peat bogs. Because of their ill effects at elevated concentrations, BOD, TSS, ammonia, nitrogen, and phosphorus restrictions are being imposed more often and with decreasing permitted concentrations. Although lagoons are one of the most cost-effective ways to treat wastewater, Lagoons alone cannot keep up with the increasingly demanding restrictions imposed on wastewater effluent. A new technology is needed to improve the treatment capacity of wastewater lagoons. Wastewater compliance systems has developed such a technology with the advent of the biodome, a submerged fixed film bioreactor that naturally enhances lagoon wastewater treatment.